Welcome to our first video demonstrating how we cook at home on our barbecue. As you can see, we've used it quite a lot. Nothing's new, nothing's trendy. We're just here to show people, our customers, how to like a good barbecue. People often ask me what's the difference between a cheap charcoal and a more expensive charcoal when the product looks exactly the same. The main difference is with a restaurant grade charcoal, obviously it's a larger bag, it's 12 kilos or 10 kilos. Uh, the, the charcoals within the bag are of a higher grade and also they're much larger chunks. So when, you burn, when you're cooking on the barbecue and you want to do a long cook, say a joint or a chicken or, 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 or pork, and you want to cook off the heat, it's best to use the larger charcoals, which will give you a much longer burn. This is one keg of charcoal that we've lit. What's to here? It's been lit now in this keg for about 25 minutes. Simply light a fire lighter or two, don't be too fussy underneath it. Let the lighter burn out completely. And then you're ready to let the charcoals out into the grate and we're nearly ready to cook. So first what we'll do is we'll lift this. It can be a bit hot, but it's not too bad. And more often than not, when we're cooking, we'll put the charcoals on one half of the grate. The reason for that is, obviously, you can control the heat that's been cooking. Again, as you can see, got a new charcoal, had this for about, this is a Dancock, had this for about 15 years. This, this thing gets well used. We also cook on grill grates. These we got five or six years ago. Used to be a pair. We had a bit of an accident with one one day. It got a bit too hot when I was cleaning. How do you clean the grill grates initially? I always turn them upside down, back over the charcoals. We're gonna let that smoke away, five or six minutes, and then we're gonna take them back inside and clean them. Simply wash them in, in, in cold water, with sunny water, and give them a good clean, because when you cook on them, we're gonna, we're gonna coat them in a small light coating of oil, a high temperature oil, so it doesn't burn. So not an olive oil, like a, just a standard, uh, rapeseed oil is, is perfectly fine. I'll show you how to do that and then we'll get to the cooking stage. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back. So we washed the grapes. Uh, not that you necessarily might think they look any different, but we have anyway. So wash the grapes and the main thing is when you're cooking, particularly today, we're going to cook some fish, some whole fish. And at the end, we're going to cook some prawns and we've got some veggies. And we're going to cheat there in the oven and we probably will finish them off on the grill if we've got enough heat left. Not quite sure, it's quite chilly here now this evening and when you're cooking at night time or in autumn, winter or spring even, you know, the ambient temperature does have an effect on the heat in your oven. So as you can see, all I'm doing with that is I'm lightly coating that, the grates here, with some oil, which happens to be rinsing oil. And in a minute, I'm going to get the fish out and we'll start to cook. Guys, here we have tonight, we've got a massive big wild sea bream we got from Humforth Fish, thanks very much guys. And this of course is sea bass. Again, it was wild, so they tell me. So what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna cook initially on the hottest part of the oven. So the hottest part of the oven is here, where the charcoals are, yeah? As you can see, not a lot of charcoal in there. One kettle, probably, probably two kilos. And there's not that much in it, the pieces aren't that big. So we're going to put the sea bream on first. There we go. And then where shall I put the sea bass there? Now, we're going to cook this for six to 10 minutes each side, depending on how hot the oven stays. Um, and nearer the end, we'll put the fish right over the charcoals just to make sure we get that really, really crisp looking skin. So we'll put the lid on. Always as well, I didn't mention, we always cook the lid on. No point in having a barbecue, particularly a kettle barbecue, and keep the lid off because all the heat in the oven is disappearing and nothing cooks properly. So we'll put the lid on. And we're not going to look at that now for probably six to ten minutes. See you later. All right, guys, it's been exactly eight minutes. When the fish is cooked, we're going to pen it. In other words, we've got a thermal pen that's going to tell us that it's cooked and not undercooked. Everything we cook, we always check it with a thermal pen and we'll do that at the end. Right, so we'll take a look at where we left it. Sea bream, sea bass. So what we're going to try and do, if we can, is a bit hot this, but hang on. We'll try and turn this without losing too much of the skin. There you go. Look at that there. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. 
this one might be a bit more difficult because we're on kind of a broken grade but okay that's doing quite well simply we're gonna close it up come back in probably another six six minutes i'd have thought all we've done with this is as you can see we slit it along there to allow some of the heat through salt and pepper at the end we're going to put some lemon juice on it dead simple cooking at the start i said we were going to cook uh, the fish we're only the fish we're going to check it with a pen at the moment thermo pen available on the internet everywhere ebay everywhere you want to look well worth the money you'll never get food poisoning look on the internet see what your food should be cooked to fish 66 68 69 if you want it when you're done chicken always plus 72 beef well 60 upwards really depending on how well you want it cooked 60 58 60 rare 65 you're pretty well done really so that's the thermal pen never cut without it 20 quid with all the money in the world so we'll check this fish now and we'll talk about this in a minute right so we're back here as you can see we're not moving nothing yet it's all still as it was we'll turn the pen on let's see where we are yeah we're a little bit down yet okay that one's smaller fish that's much closer you know you could say it's actually over that's cooked that's cooked in places let's be sensible about this and of course when you take it off the temperature rises ambiently so we'll just going to give that a shift enter there and we're going to give it another two minutes we'll see you in a second come back to you grates over again we're going to turn it over it should turn because we clean the grates and the thing about when you clean the grates is with a bit of luck particularly with fish we'll give that a bit of a toasty now that it's gone onto the high side we should be able to get some more colour on that when you clean the grate take all the previous cooking off it should leave it nice clean grey the product won't stick to it so we're just going to leave that there for another minute or two we've still got plenty of heat in this when we've done this we're going to take a look and quickly cut those prawns bit of veg we've got some some uh, veggies cooking in the oven we decided not to put it on the barbecue it's a little bit chilly it'll take too long so cheating it and it's gone in the oven as normal we'll see the results in a few minutes time Just one more minute and then I'm taking them out. You can see, you can see the fish there. Oops, it's all opaque. Yeah, that's another sign if you haven't got a pen. Once everything's clear, juices are clear, opaque. That's cut. I'm happy. I'm just going to set up for this. What do you say? We have some prawns, some garlic, some ginger, um, some chilli uh, and I think we've got a bit of cumin in there as well, I'm not quite sure. They'll take about three to four minutes. We have some uh, tomato and a bit of sweet corn and then we're going to serve. Okay, uh, as you can see, we're there or thereabouts, I, I do believe. We're going to nip the prawns off. And I have washed my hands several times, um, and you'll see why. The grill grates end up like this and what we we'll simply do is we leave these and we'll just let them curl and do nothing with them don't even bother them tonight and next time we cook we will heat them up get them nice and hot let this all this this old cooking burn off go inside clean them thoroughly get them ready recoat them with oil we're ready to cook again Big thank you to Home First Fresh Fish, best fishmonger around. Uh, we always get all our fish from there, we eat a lot of fish. 
I also want to mention Baltimore Farm Shop. Next time we do a video, we're either going to do one of their either one or two ribs on the bone, or, or do a really nice cut called a, a rolled rump. Cooks in about an hour, believe it or not, on the barbecue, off the heat, loads of heat left. We've got tons of heat left in this. We could carry on cooking on this for another hour easily. We cheated on, on the corn, that was pre-boiled, so it's ready, ready to go, and we're just crisping it up. So guys, we're ready to eat. If you like this video, we're Fitzpatrick Fuels, Huddersfield, always willing to answer questions, help any way we can. We supply restaurant charcoal, we supply uh, briquettes, obviously we're a fuel merchant, so in winter time we're supplying logs and coal. We always have quality kiln dry logs for your pizza ovens. Anything you need, give us a look. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. Enjoy your food.